Hey guys, what's up? I am the Stormchild. So finally here my review to the newest Nightwish Blu-ray Decades live in Buenos Aires and here is the thing. Um, as a German soccer player say, I said I think nearly 20 years ago that was exactly the time when I started listening to Nightwish. So yeah, curiously. Um, so yeah, I can say in the first place um, it's absolutely amazing really it is it is um so yeah tell you a little story i just came from work and i just saw that this cool thing arrived uh because i have expected that it will be arrived tomorrow so that that was really a surprise and i was just taking a shower get something to eat and then watching this blu-ray and yeah i think yeah five minutes ago this uh, the Blu-ray stopped, so this is really my first expression of it. So I, uh, if I miss any detail or something, um, yeah, that could happen. It's just my first expression of it. Uh, but I can say the first thing is absolutely amazing. Really, I'm totally in love. And as you all know, um, I'm a absolutely massive Nightwish fan since nearly 20 years. If you watch my channel a bit, uh, you know that already. Um, I told a lot of stories, but the first thing I want to say is it's the Decades Tour. So this is about the Nightwish history. So they started in 1996, I think that is 23 years. And yeah, they have three different singers, um, um, a different drummer now, a different bass player now. Um, they have Troy as a new member there, so a lot of things changed. But um, the thing that most people talk about uh, is uh, are the three singers, especially when it comes to um, yeah a setlist like this on this amazing decades tour uh, from the past. Uh, because yeah, you compare the singers a bit, and I do that as well. But don't get me wrong. If you watch my videos, you already know that I just love all three singers of Nightwish, really. And yeah, I started in the year 2000 with the Wishmaster album with Taya. And so there is a lot of nostalgia in me because I was only 13 or 14 years old when I started listening to Nightwish. And it was just like, sometimes it is strange to hear the newer version from the newest singer. So don't get me wrong if I say something um, yeah, that is just my opinion. It's not really objective, it's subjective. And yeah, but I think everybody has his own way. And some Nightwish fans started with Annette, some uh, Nightwish fans started with Floor, and it's all okay. We all love Nightwish. So um, yeah, because I was a bit curious on the last video for Nightwish I did uh, for Slaying the Dreamer from this Decades tour, because um, yeah, there were um, a lot of thumbs down for my video because yeah, I said that I uh, like the Taya version more. But that is nothing, something bad about it. Oh my God, if you like the Flow version more, it's okay. So yeah, just that you said, I'm a big Nightwish fan. I love all three singers. But now to the main thing, and I have to show you this once again because I just love it. I fell in love from this very first second. Oh my God, okay. The first thing I have to say is I love the sound of it. Oh my god, the sound is so great. Um, because on the last live DVD, um, yeah, Vehicle of Spirit, um, yeah, that wasn't so good to me. Um, especially the Tampere show. Uh, from just from the area and the stadium and they were in Finland and everything that was so great but the sound wasn't so good in my ears, especially the bass sound. And also the Wembley show was so great but it was just like there was something not so working. I don't know why or what but uh, I can tell you that in this Blu-ray, in this new Blu-ray, the sound is absolutely perfect. Really it is. Um, yeah, I think uh, back in 2013 and End of an Era and From Wishes to Eternity have a great sound. And this definitely has it. So um, you can hear this definitely on CD and MP3 and Spotify, whatever. It has an absolutely perfect sound. Uh, I just love it. And also the arena. Um, cool 
thing. In my last two reaction videos I have done for Nightwish for uh, Slaying the Dreamer and Devil in the Deep Dark Ocean from this Decades tour, I was um, so sure that they're showing the audience so much. But you will see the audience in this. For me it's uh, really important, for other people not. I've learned that also in, uh, in the comments section. For some people it's just not... yeah... It's nothing they really care about, but for me it's just like for the live feeling. I love that to see the people really reacting to this concert and everything, and you will get this on this Blu-ray. And um, that was for me one of the coolest things ever. So yeah, um, yeah, I have to look at the set list. So I have seen um, Nightwish also on the Decades tour uh, in Stuttgart. I think that was... Um, two months after this was recorded, or two and a half months, and have done a bit of changes in the set list. So on this Blu-ray they have played one more song that was Deep Silent Complete. That was really sad that they haven't played this in Stuttgart in Germany, because I love this song. And they have two changes in the set list. Uh, also a thing, I talked about that in my Nightwish concert review from the Decades tour. Uh, you can also watch this on my channel, of course. Um, the first song. Uh, in this Blu-ray is End of All Hope. In Stuttgart it was Dark Chest of Wonders. So, yo, uh, I love Dark Chest of Wonders. And I think that is one of the most perfect opening tracks of all time. Really, definitely. But I'm just a Sentry Child guy. So, I would love to hear this song live and I have never heard it. And that was my, I think, final chance to hear it live. And in Germany they changed the set list. But finally I have the chance to listen it to here on this um, live brewery, which is absolutely amazing. And they had changed, uh, in Germany they played, instead of Amaranth, they played Last Ride of the Day. So, not so many changes, uh, then the set list was the same, so I know it. Um, but yeah, I have to keep it here a bit, uh, because I have to talk about um, a lot of stuff, really. Um, you know I'm a big Nightwish fan, so this is, I think, going to be a long video, <laughs> I'm sorry. But I'm just so in love, I'm just so in love. So, first of all, the intro. The intro um, is amazing, um, because it shows so many things um, that went wrong in our society. Uh, really, it is a bit funny and sad at the same time. Um, and I think that is also the perspective of Thomas Holopine or, or whoever had this idea for this intro. Um, because uh, when you are aware on the decades too, I think you know exactly what I'm talking about it, uh, because they definitely wanted to make sure that nobody uses their cell phones on the concert and just gave the attention to the band and the performance. And don't uh, share shitty material um, on the internet. That is really the message of the intro. And the curious thing is, when you're watching the intro, everybody has their cell phone up like this. <laughs> it's really like... Um, yeah... Um, what can I say? This is our society. I'm one of them. Really, I'm one of them. I don't, don't get me wrong. But it's just like, it's cool to see this difference. It's really cool. So this is why I like the intro. And also it started with Swanheart, a version of uh, Troy as, um, yeah, on flutes and on his pipes, uh, which is absolutely awesome and a cool intro. I haven't expected that. Uh, when I have seen them live and I thought it was absolutely perfect and then it started with End of All Hope, one of my favorite tracks. I, the Sentry Child album is my favorite Nightwish album, you have to know it if you haven't watched my uh, other videos and so great and I love just the Sentry Child background with the waterfalls. It was just like oh my god this is so great, I just love it. And uh, yeah, so because I haven't seen it live, oh my god. Um, Great start, I think perfect opening track and yeah, Flo talking a bit uh, to the people and the audience was hot, oh my god. I think everybody knew that the audience in South America is extremely hot and I was just wondering about the um, Blu-ray if they maybe uh, turn the volume a bit down of the audience because in South America they always sing along with this ole 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 and something and in some places of the Blu-ray I thought they have just pulled the volume down 
I, I don't know if that was really the case, but it was just felt like this because the audience was too loud. <laughs> yeah, and that could happen. I think in South America, I was never in South America, never on a metal concert, but I think that happens. A lot of bands told that earlier. And End of All Hope, absolutely fantastic. I love it. Um, surprise, the th uh, surprising thing is that Marcus sings a lot uh, more here on this Blu-ray to other songs, especially the older ones. That was a bit of a surprise. So the second one was uh, Wish I Had an Angel. I think was one of the most popular thing, uh, songs of Nightwish. And yeah, for me, uh, a bit too much played because I haven't heard so much. It was a big hit here in Germany back in 2004. I, I think, uh, yeah, this is all 15 years ago, but still a track that was played so much. Oh my God, that was played so much. But uh, in this one, I really enjoyed it. It was absolutely cool, especially of the back screen, because uh, with this great once angel, I had a tattoo of it on my back between my shoulders. And so I love this. And this looks so cool with the lightnings and everything. Wow, they, this was absolutely fantastic. So this is what really get me into the song one more time after all these years. Um, so yeah, great performance of the song, uh, still works definitely and a great number two, I think a great decision because uh, as I think um, till the Dark Passion Play Tour it was the last song of the concert but I think it's a perfect number two. So Thomas Holobayan always a great man when it comes to set list. Um, then for me the third song, uh, a really special one, Tenth Man Down. One, this was something I was just waiting for and I thought that they would release it uh, before the Blu-ray comes out. Maybe they will release tomorrow another video from the Decades Tour, I'm not sure, but that could happen just to promote the whole thing. But Times Went Down is so cool from the Over Hills and Far Away EP in 2001. A cool song, great live performance, also like the back screen and yeah, this song is so cool. I just love it that they have done it on the set list. One of my big highlights when I was on the concert. Definitely great. Great live performance. Great singing overall. Um, then Come Cover Me. That was really a surprise. That was really a surprise because they have done a lot of new uh, orchestration in all of the songs. Uh, I talked about that already in Devil in the Deep Dark Ocean review. Um, they have done a lot of orchestration, which I love. It was just like... When you know the other tracks, it's just like, oh, holy hell, what's that? What's that? Um, but it's cool because you can uh, just, yeah, flying through the Nightwish history in a completely different way because it's a new sound where it's just like, okay, in the first second you're just like, oh, 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 I don't know, I don't know. This is not what I know from the old records. Uh, but afterwards, really cool stuff. Really cool stuff, I love it. But in Come Cover Me, also Marco and Troy sing along with Floor, which was pretty surprising. And I wasn't sure about that performance. Um, yeah, because it was so new. It was just so new and I was just like, okay. Yeah, I just have to watch it again. I watched it once, so uh, I just needed a bit of time, but that was really a bit curious for me. Not bad. It was just like some completely new song in a way for me, uh, but yeah, still great. Uh, Gethsemane, one of the um, also highlights of the Decades tour. Um, cool, cool stuff and a great vocal performance by Floor. This is a song I love. Uh, Floor vocals more than tires on the album version, I have to say it. It's just a new interpretation and yeah, um, I think Empu is struggling a bit with the solo in the end, which is a bit funny. Also to see Empu with a little of a beard, because sometimes a Blu-ray just show everything and it's just like, oh, Empu has a beard a bit? That was a bit new. <laughs> but yeah, that has nothing to do with the uh, Blu-ray. Um, Ilan, um, a song I already, uh, also talked about in the reaction video when I have done it for them. Absolutely cool live number. I've never thought that when the song came out. It was just like, um, yeah, I don't want to say lame in the first hearing. That would be wrong, but it needs to grow on you. And especially live, it does with this awesome crowd in South America when they sing along and everything that works so perfect. And 
Oh my god, that was so great. Um, also then, um, Sacrament of Wilderness. Um, interesting song from the Oceanborn album, track number four. Um, cool song. I know, the only thing I really know is that Marco hates to play this live. I don't know exactly why, maybe it's a bit difficult to play or something. It's not one of my favorite songs, but it has to be there uh, on the Decades tour because it's a big part of the Nightwish history, so a great song. Uh, we come to Deep Silent Complete. I talked about that earlier, um, a song that was missing on the show I was. Um, cool interpretation, but in this case I have to say I love the Taya version more. Um, in some ways, um, Flora had this, because this has to be sang in a bit of an operatic style. We discussed that a lot in the comments and everything. Um, and in some moments, Flora does that. But not the whole thing. And um, yeah, that was really, maybe I have to listen to it some more, but it was just like, um, I think the tire version with this operatic style, if Flo has done it and she could do that, I know it, um, it would be cooler. But I, that is exactly the nostalgia I'm talking about. Uh, that was the first Nightwish album I've ever listened to on the Wishmaster and it's just, yeah, in my brain so much that I just need this version. Uh, but still a great performance. I love that this song was on the set list or is on the set list of this Blu-ray because I think I've never heard it live. That is really a shame. I've never heard it live. Oh my god. But finally um, on this Blu-ray this is so cool. But yeah, this was a bit difficult. Maybe I need a bit time for it. And then a real big highlight. Dead Boy's poem. I also posted this on uh, Instagram and Facebook. Also, if someone from the Nightwish World community from Facebook is watching, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I just saw that, um, yeah, Facebook blocked the video in many countries. So, um, it is just like maybe because it isn't released yet or something. I don't know. But uh, if you don't hear a, a sound, it wasn't my mistake. It's copyright issues. So yeah, uh, but that was really, I had goosebumps, really, because I love the song and also the interpretation of Floor, really great. Um, and also I love it that Marco playing um, this guitar, this opening guitar, because um, the last time they performed on a live DVD or Blu-ray was on From Wishes to Eternity and the guitars um, just came from um, from backing tracks. And this time Marco played it live, which works definitely better and makes it even more beautiful. This was a hell of a performance. One of my favorite tracks. I just love it live when I was on the concert. Also here on this Blu-ray. I think one of the strongest tracks here on the Blu-ray also with the performance. I really had goosebumps on this. This was so great. I just have to share it with you. Um, great performance. Elvening, um, yeah, the the more or less intro for Elven Path and Elven Path was um, also really a surprise because that is definitely a song um, I like the floor version more like definitely um, because she just give this uh, completely other direction and it fits better to her voice uh, because I it was um, never one of my favorite tricks, uh, tracks of uh, Nightwish uh, but I like the flow version a lot more than the Taya version on the original album. Maybe it is also because Taya was very young and the production wasn't so good at this time and everything. But it was just like it fits better to a flow's voice. I don't know, but a real cool performance also and a cool that they have done it live on the very first album, uh, Angel for First. Um, also then a song. I was a bit complaining about in my concert review, uh, I want my tears back. It's also a track I um, have heard a bit too much in my life. And that is the reason, it's just like, okay, this song again. But when it comes to this Blu-ray, oh my god, what a hell of a performance. I, I just fell in love once again, because I think that is, I don't know if it's really the case, but just from the looks, that this is Flo's favorite track. Just from her performance and how the fun on stage she has, it's unbelievable. And it's just like, it makes you smile and everything. This is so cool, I just love it. And this song 
is definitely a highlight on this Blu-ray. I haven't expected that because I was a bit complaining, oh I have heard it so much, maybe they have could play it another song instead of this and so and now I'm so happy that this is on the Blu-ray. That could happen when it comes to Nightwish. Um, great performance. I love it. I love it. Then Amaranth. So yeah, I talked about that. I had to drink something. I talk so much. I'm so sorry. Um, I have talked about that in my Amaranth, Amaranth reaction video. I have used the Annette version because um, I like the Annette version more. Um, just it fits very good to her voice. Uh, so the floor version isn't bad or something. It's just like um, maybe also of nostalgia. I don't know. But it's just like I know the original version and this is not a song that fits so perfect to floor voice. But I like definitely the live interpretation of the song when it gets more heavier in the middle part uh, with the guitars and the bass and the drums um, because they change the rhythm a bit and I love this new um, live version definitely. So cool song, not one of my favorites or something but it has to be on a Nightwish best of tour of course because it was a big hit also in Germany I think in the top 10 definitely in a single charts and that is not so easy as a metal band in Germany. So um, cool stuff, not the highlight for me but definitely has to be. then. A big highlight. Oh my god, The Carpenter. Oh my god, the very first single of Nightwish ever. And that was also one of the big highlights when I saw them live. Um, because I love the version that Troy sings. It's just like, okay, Thomas will never sing again. Uh, he said that I think in the year 2000 or something after a Wacken live concert that he totally fucked up with his vocals. Um, yeah, but it was so cool and it was a right decision because Troy has a cool voice and can sing such kinds of, of songs. And it was so cool to see in the back of the screen this Angel Fall first um, album cover. I was just bringing back so many memories. I mean, that was the first Nightwish single ever. Um, a big part of history and I was just surprised that they have really played it and so yeah and I really think if Troy wasn't in the band they never would play it again. So definitely a great decision to put this on the set list, a great highlight, it just sounds so perfect. I wasn't, was never a big fan of The Carpenter as a singer uh, because also um, the chorus for me doesn't work so well, I don't know, but in this live version it's absolutely amazing, amazing. Really it's yeah, I'm speechless. It's really the case. Then the Kinslayer, also interesting number. Um, the second track I've ever heard from Nightwish because my first album was uh, Wishmaster. The first song was She's My Sin and then the Kinslayer. So it was the second song of Nightwish I've ever heard. It has to be on uh, a live concert because I think it's absolutely live number. So I think Marco struggled a bit with, with his um, lyrics or vocals. It, it just like... it. it it is a bit strange. I don't know if that happened at some accident or something or it's just my ears but it was just like or he performs completely different because he was speaking the voice that came in the back. Yeah, um, on other concerts they're using backing tracks to, to simulate this voice but in this case Marco does it and it's just like okay something went a bit wrong. I don't know if that really is the case but a great life number and the really interesting thing is that you all know the riff, the main riff of the Kinslayer in the beginning and Thomas started with uh, one octave uh, deeper and then go higher. That was also a cool effect on it because it uh, sounded a bit fresher and newer and um, cool stuff they have done. Um, then Devil and Deep Dark Ocean. I talked about that of course in the reaction video. You can watch it as well here on my channel. Um, one of the big highlights. Oh my god, and after watching it here again, oh, I love it. Also a song that Floor version is definitely my favorite um, because there is so much going on. Also the new orchestration, new elements and yeah, the Marco vocals for me are yeah, not a problem or something. It would be cooler if Tapio Vizca sings this or growls this because I love Tapio Vizca and his deep growls and he's also a big part of the Nightwish history, especially when you watch the end of Innocent uh, DVD in the year, to, year 2003. And yeah, but also a great performance. One of the coolest.
coolest tracks and I wasn't surprised that that was really the first song they brought out for promoting this new live Blu-ray because it's just one highlight, it's just kicking ass, it's so damn in your face, I just love it. And then of course Nemo has to be in the set list when it comes to a best of thing. Also a bit overplayed in my ears. Um, but here also um, the sound of the Blu-ray is really interesting because on the last um, Blu-rays or DVD or whatever you want to call it, also from Wack in 2013 and uh, Vehicle of Spirit in both concerts, I think the flute was just a bit too loud and makes the song a bit, yeah, complicated. I don't know, but um, the mix in this Blu-ray is so perfect that, um, yeah, it just sounded I think exactly the way that they want to sound it. So um, Nemo works perfectly on this Blu-ray because for me it was always not the greatest life number um, but in this one it works absolutely fantastic. That was really a surprise. So yeah, um, Slaying the Dreamer. I have also done a reaction video for that because that was the second uh, video that came out to promote, uh, promote this Blu-ray. Um, that was surprising and I have gotten a many dislikes of it uh, because I was talking about that, that I like the Taiga version more. And I still say that. Um, you ha can have other opinions. That is <laughs> nothing bad about it. Um, it's just like for me, this is one of my most important songs of Night, which is really emotional and this is really, yeah, one of my biggest songs in my life, really, I can tell you that. Um, I have talked about that a lot more in my Slaying the Dreamer review um, with Taya. You can check this out on my channel as well if you're interested to hear my personal story uh, for this song. So maybe that is the case why I love the Taya version more. But, um, and also with a screen problem. <laughs> but and that was really the only song that I have to say something bad about the back screen. Um, because in all other songs the backstream was just phenomenal and I love it. But yeah, maybe that just happened because this song is so important to me. Maybe you can understand it. If not, I can't help you, I'm sorry. So yeah, um, then The Greatest Show on Earth. Yeah, of course, uh, one of the biggest highlights. Um, because, yeah, the longest track that Nightwish have ever wrote, uh, written. Um, yeah, for me, not so necessary needed on the set list. I have to say it. I know a lot of people will say something different, but it's just like, um, okay, I just look in from this perspective. It's a long, long song. And I like it. You can watch my The Great Stone Earth review as well here on my channel to get my really thoughts into this song, then you know what I'm talking about. But um, it's just like, okay, are they playing The Great show, uh, show on Earth or three different older tracks? Maybe you can get the point what I'm talking about. It's just like, oh, it would be so cool if they play other older tracks like Nymphomaniac Fantasia. Oh, that would be so great. The scent of a woman was not mine. Or something. Um, or, or, or Crownless. Or Dead to the World or something. Maybe you can get the idea what I'm talking about. Then the last song is, of course, Ghost Love Score. I think the biggest hit on Nightwish. And definitely a song that Floor Rule. Um, it's just like... Floor, um, yeah, turns this song into her song. It's just like it was originally sang by Taya Turin, you all know that, but that is really a song that Floor just grabbed and take it into her heart and never let her out. It's just her song. It became her song. I never thought that would be possible, but it happened, definitely. It's her song. And deservingly, because um, this is definitely a version I love uh, more by Flo Janssen, uh, because it's her song. I don't know how this ever could happen, um, but it's just like that. And so yeah, overall, a great Blu-ray, really. Um, yeah, it is, I think, yeah, one of um, the, the coolest things I've ever seen. I just was thinking about what's my favorite live concert DVD or Blu-ray from Nightwish. Um, it's hard. It's hard. It's, it, it's really hard to choose. 
So yeah, because I love all of them, but it's definitely one of the best ever. Oh my God, you will love it. If you haven't seen it yet, you will love it. If you are a really Nightwish fan and have followed the past over the last 20, 25 years, it's just like such cool travel back in time. And also I like the, um, the arena. They haven't used Pyrus. Um, someone in the comments t uh, told me that there was an accident in an arena um, and they weren't allowed to do it because there were many people were dying or, or just a tragedy happened and that is their case. They weren't able to use Pyrus and that is okay because for me it fits so perfect when it goes back to history it's just like, okay, Nightwish wasn't so big at this time. And it was just like, it feels a bit this way, a bit of a smaller arena than in Europe. And it feels natural and everything. Such cool, I'm so in love. So um, I can wait to hear your thoughts about this new Blu-ray. And really, if you haven't got it yet, or you're living in a country and you have to wait a bit, it's worth it. It's worth it to wait uh, because you will love it. If you are a true Nightwish fan, you will just love it. I can tell you that. It's, and from the sound, I have to say it once again. Because I was a bit disappointed on the Vehicle of Spirit because it was not so cool to listen to it uh, on headphones or something. This one definitely was absolutely fantastic. I just love it. So yeah, um, anyway guys. Decades, Nightwish, tell me your thoughts if you have watched it, um, would be interesting to hear your thoughts and just love Nightwish, don't complain about the singers or something, I do that as well, I know, but um, we all now love Nightwish, so give them love and just enjoy this awesome Blu-ray, hope you enjoyed this one guys. Um, if you like it, of course, please subscribe my channel, it would be so awesome. I will do, I think, a lot from this Blu-ray here on my channel in the next month. I'm absolutely sure about it. I can wait, honestly, to talk a bit more about each and every song about it, because um, I have a lot on my mind. Um, so yeah, with that said, guys, hope you have a great day. Enjoy this Blu-ray. If it comes to you tomorrow, it will be a great day, I can say you that. Uh, hopefully we see us the next time on The Storm Child. Bye.